Cisco ASAV VPN, AnyConnect trusted network detection with umbrella use cases focusing on split DNS. Remember, split DNS is a, a configuration someone might use internally to provide certain IP addresses to domains based on the requesting client IP. So there's a couple use cases here, right? Asset uh, with no roaming client on premise, that's pretty simple, right? Everything gets forward to the split DNS and the split DNS then uh, does recursive to umbrella. Um, roaming client untrusted network. So this is when uh, you're off premise. This is pretty easy too, it goes to umbrella. Asset with roaming client on trusted network on premises where we need to disable the roaming client and make sure the uh, the requesting IP is coming from the client directly to the split DNS internal server. And then asset roaming uh, client on a trusted network with VPN split tunneling. Again, we want to make sure we disable the uh, umbrella roaming client, right, or agent or module. So what I've done is I built this out. So if you have off-premise, untrusted, when you make a DNS request security, you're gonna get the identity of the host, right? Because you're off-premise and you're plugged in directly to the internet, so you go to Umbrella directly. Proxy, uh, anything that's gonna be proxied will fall under content and then you'll have identity as host as well, okay? Off-premise, you have DNS, again, security. In this case, you're gonna have network host as the identity. At least that what shows up in Umbrella because again the requesting client IP goes directly to the server and the server makes the request or the DNS server makes the request. DNS again for trusted network again will be network host and then proxy is content for all of them is identity host because you're you're proxying directly right as an example. Um, at least in the use cases I'm developing right this is all based on. Um, leveraging the roaming client um, from Umbrella. So from the outside in, we see we're protected both from a DNS security perspective as well as a secure gateway perspective. So we're gonna do some testing so we can make sure that we nail down these identities, right? So we'll go to you know, a specific site on, on this use case and that way it's easier to track what identity we actually are showcasing. So here we'll also go to, so the first one was a banking site, which would be content. This one's DNS security. Now the nice thing about DNS security is a first line of defense, right? So um, as I mentioned before, you don't want to complicate it in the proxy video that I did. You don't want to complicate policy. DNS does DNS stuff, and then you move all your content stuff to the proxy portion or the web content portion. Here we're going to VPN in. Now the difference here is, is we're using trusted network detection. So this should help with, and I showed this in a previous video, that the, that's protected, but it's using the network portion of Umbrella. And then the web proxy functions as normal in this use case. So again, we'll go to a website here, box.com, and we can see content filtering kicked in, right? It's being blocked as an application. And then we're going to come in here and test uh, another site that we can very quickly go back in the reporting. And you can see the security threat. So this is based on DNS layer uh, protection. Okay, so we've got one more use case and that's on trusted network. Now again, feel free to pause the video as I walk through those flows so you get an idea of the identity and the flow, right? It's, it's very difficult to showcase this um, and piece it all together. So you can see the VPN says that we're on a trusted network, so it turns off and it uses the DNS layer security on premise. Looks good. We'll quickly do a test here. This should be allowed based on our content security policy. And it is. And we'll also go to a block site here as well. Go to botnet. And you can see DNS layer security kicked in. 
So again, remember this use case is very specific to someone requiring split DNS and being able to identify that client IP that's requesting the resolution. Okay, so we can see here this internet bad guys. This is the Windows host. So this is the untrusted um, use case. And I use untrust or trusted with a grain of salt here, right? But um, this is the untrusted use case. And you can see that the identity used was Windows. If we go to the next one, this was the VPN use case. And again, the, the identity should be the network, right? Because we want the DNS to do the recursive DNS lookup on behalf of the client, but we need the client to go to that server and not directly to Umbrella. And then the final one is trust, and that was the lab. Right again, that is network portion. That's exactly what we want. That's the identity we want used. If we look at proxy, what you're going to find here is every one of the proxy um, capabilities because we're not using the resolver now, they're going directly um, to uh, the proxy. Right? So here you can see with the untrusted, right? It was showing as the identity of the host, right? In this case, uh, VPN. Again, that's the box that was blocked, and it was the host. And then finally, trust, right? Again, using trust with a grain of salt here, but this is inside the network. Um, trust also shows the host identity in this case, right? Because it is the requesting, uh, it, it, it is the thing that's requesting. We're not doing anything additional here, um, like proxy chaining, etc which you can still do with X forwarders, but anyways, um, you get an idea. So if we look at this flow again, that off premise, right? So cr just plugged into the internet, right? At uh, your local coffee shop, the identity in both cases, DNS and proxy are host, okay? Um, which makes a lot of sense, right? There's no split DNS in this case on premise that's required. Then off-premise, so this is now VPN in, you're gonna actually use DNS internal. And so you're gonna see in Umbrella the requesting IP as the network. And then the proxy though portion would see the identity of host. And the trusted being inside the network, again, you're gonna see the identity as network for DNS. Um, and for proxy identity is host as well, okay? So anyways, this was a little bit of a, a, a more complicated use case that I've seen out there. And this is some of the ways of solving some of those um, complexities. Pretty simple either way.